Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Texas Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event tonight and have some really fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Karis and I will be your facilitator for the night. And so before we get started, I have just a few housekeeping items. The first one you've probably already noticed, your camera and microphone are off. So the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can, however, use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of the many different sessions happening. So be sure to check out the schedule on the website. And then my final announcement is that this presentation is being recorded and will be available to you at strivescan.com slash Texas. That wraps up all of my announcements. And so I will go ahead and turn it over to our first institution, which looks like it will be American College Dublin. Thank you so much, Karis. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Okay, start my timer. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Healy and I am the admissions representative for the American College Dublin, located in the heart of Dublin, Ireland. Um, I am so happy that you have all uh, made it to this presentation tonight. Um, we're really excited to um, say a little about each of our schools. So I love to start my presentation with this picture because I think it gives a really great representation of the city as a whole. Um, as you can see, there's plenty of things going on. There's a lot of stores, restaurants, pubs, libraries, um, just a lot of little, little nooks and crannies throughout the city that you can discover. Um, so it has that really intimate community feel, but it also does have that metropolitan busy um, feel as well. So it gives a really great balance of the two. And then if you bring your view to the back of the photo, that is St. Anne's Church, and that is where we hold our formal graduation ceremonies. So there's something for you all to look forward to a little further down the road. So we are an Irish American university, which means we uphold the standards of accrediting bodies from both Ireland and the US. Um, and what this means for you as a student is you can pick the path that makes the most sense for you. Um, and when I say that, I mean through the Irish accreditation, you will go on a three year undergrad tra track, um, different from what we see here in the States, and you will just take courses under the degree that you've applied for. So, say you apply to the inter international business program, you won't be taking any creative writing classes. Um, and then on the flip through the Middle States accreditation, it will be that more standard four year, and you'll be taking those like general election courses um, and think, and classes that are outside of, um, of your degree. So it just gives you an opportunity to see, um, you know, who you are as a student and your, your learning style and what makes the most sense for you. So we are a very small school, um, but because that we are a, allowed to um, offer these interactive lectures. Uh, and we're really excited about them because it allows for a very fun and interesting and vibrant um, classroom experience. The lectures are typically less than 20 students, but I would say even smaller than that. Um, it's definitely a classroom that revolves more around the students and the professor. Um, of course, the professor, professor will be in the classroom kind of steering conversations and topics, but it's, it's a lot of opinions and perspectives coming in and and sharing with your other classmates. So it's a very interesting experience. So Dublin is your campus. As I mentioned, we are located right in the city center. We're about a 30 second walk from the National Gallery Museum. Um, and we, we really encourage our students to take advantage of the city. Um, you know, just thinking about postgrads, a lot of big um, companies have European offices right in Dublin, like a 10 minute walk from campus, including Google, Apple, LinkedIn, um, just to name a few. So there's a lot going on in the city. Um, and we also push our students to realize that there's much as there's just as much to learn walking around the city than there is in the classroom. Um, so there's a lot to take advantage of. Our administration is small, like our school and our classes, um, but it's small by design with an emphasis on reducing bureaucracy. Um, so our offices operate under an open door policy and our students are really encouraged to drop by and get to know the staff. Um, we're small because we want to be able to offer our help to our students. Um, we really want our students to reach their fullest potential in the classroom and out. 
Um, and so to do that, we need to know what you need any help and answer any questions. And for that to happen, we need you to, you know, stop by and let us know and we encourage it. So these are the programs we offer that three year bachelor's track that I mentioned in international business and liberal arts. And then the four year bachelor in international business, hospitality management, event management, and liberal arts. And then we also offer four year BFAs in musical theater and performance and creative writing. So even though we are small, we welcome applicants from every corner of the globe. Um, and because of this, our requirements are aimed at gathering more of a holistic view of, our, of the applicant. So we really wanna to get to know who you are. Because of this, what's required is a minimum 2.0 GPA. Um, and then for any transfer, transfer or mature student, a resume or CV. Um, and then a personal statement that describes why you would like to study your chosen area at ACD. Um, so this is your opportunity as a student to really paint that vibrant picture, because this is our um, opportunity as a school to get to know you and make sure that you're a good fit for us and also that we're a good fit for you. Um, so really take advantage of that personal statement. Um, we have been test optional forever um, and we will continue to be so. So if you want to include it, great. If not, we will not, you know, take it will not affect you in a, in a negative way. Um, for non-European students, our tuition is 9,000 euro. Last time I checked, that was like 10,400, I believe. And then our BFA is just um, a bit more expensive because there's different locations, you have class and um, different materials. So just something to keep in mind. We do operate under a rolling admission. <clears throat> so as you apply, we will get you um, a decision within two weeks. So you can apply as early as you want to, um, and we will get your get you your decision as soon as possible. Again, my name is Sarah Healy, and I am with the American College Dublin. I will drop my contact information um, in the chat below and the link for our application page. Thank you very much. All right, we will keep things going with our next institution, which will be Oxford Brooks University. Hi everyone, let me just share my screen. There we go. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Siobhan Frank. I'm the Global Recruitment Manager here at Oxford Brookes University. Uh, and similar to my colleagues that are here today, uh, I help students from the US, Canada and Mexico come to study here. Um, now you might be able to tell that my accent isn't from the UK. Uh, I did, however, move to the UK about four years ago. I only intended to stay in Oxford for one year, but I loved it so much that I ended up staying for longer. Now I'll tell you a little bit about Oxford Brooks and our location. So we are located in Oxford, which is in the United Kingdom. Uh, if you look over here on our left hand side, you can see a map of the UK and Ireland, and you'll see Oxford. We're nice and close to London. We're about an hour away, and we're about an hour away as well from Heathrow and Gatwick Airport. Uh, now those are probably going to be the two main airports that you fly into as an international student from North America. And luckily we do have direct links actually to and from those airports with a stop directly outside of our Headington campus. So it's nice and convenient to get to and from the airport. Now you might recognize the name of the city. That is because we do share the city with a very uh, with another very famous university. Uh, so we do share the city with uh, the University of Oxford. So what that means is that we've got a really high student population here in the city and one in four adults here are students. Um, so it is very much a student friendly and a student centric city. Now, Oxford itself has a lot going on, and there's a lot going on in around the uh, industry and enterprise as well. So uh, we are in the heart of Motorsport Valley. We've got, you know, a number of different publishing houses. We've got biotech, biomedicine. Uh, we have tech. There's lots of different things that are going on, partly because of all the research and all of the innovation that's happening at the universities. Now, as a student here at Oxford Brooks, you're going to get access to what's called the Bodleian Library and the Oxford Union. These are resources at the University of Oxford, uh, but we do have a really good relationship between the two universities. So as an Oxford Brooks student, you'll get access to these. Now, the Bodleian Library is a very large library system, and it is the library system at the University of Oxford. And the Oxford Union is a debating society. So um, that is, uh, they, uh, in addition to uh, being a debating society, they also hold a number of different really interesting 
interesting events all throughout the year, uh, including a very famous speaker series. So they've had anyone from famous actors, famous musicians, they've had political and world leaders. So it is a really interesting thing to get involved with. Now a little bit about Oxford Brooks, we've got four main faculties. We've got our business school, health and life sciences, humanities and social sciences, and our faculty of technology design and the environment. Within that, we have a number of different schools and departments, and within that, a number of different programs that are available. Here in England, our programs are three years in length, but a lot of our programs here at Oxford Brooks, you have the opportunity of adding what's a, a fourth year, an additional work placement year. So typically that's called the sandwich mode, and that's usually because it's sandwiched in between your second and third year of study. Uh, but it's a really great opportunity to get some work experience uh, as well as your, uh, as your degree at the end of it. Now over here on our right hand side, you can see our library that we've got here on campus. That's within our John Henry Brooks building, which is our main student central building. Uh, really great space. It was recently re renovated. Uh, great architecture. We have a really strong architecture program here at the university so that ethos does carry through in the buildings. Now a little bit about why you might want to choose Oxford Brooks. It's more than just our rankings. You get the opportunity to live and study in Oxford, which is a world famous city known for its rich history and education. You'll gain the fundamental skills and global experience to succeed in your chosen career. As I mentioned, you could potentially have that work placement year if you wanted. We do have a lot of supports here in place at the university to help you find those, uh, those work placements as well. Now you also get to experience a new country and a new culture and you'll get to make a whole bunch of international friends. We have students from over 140 different countries here at Brooks. Uh, now, as a student, you'll also get the support that you need, so I won't go into too much detail here, but I'll quickly outline some of the supports that we've got available for our students. So we've got our academic, uh, academic Development Center, which is really here uh, to make sure that you meet your academic goals. We have our inclusive support team, including our disability and dyslexia services, our counseling service, which is a confidential service available to all of our enrolled students multi-faith chaplaincy, our career service, and our mentoring schemes. So a quick note about our career service and our mentoring schemes, they're really great. They're here to help you during your studies and after your studies as well. So there are opportunities to get involved in both, both as a student and an alum. Now, as a student here, you'll also get to take a free language module. So all of our full-time undergraduate and postgraduate students can take up to one free language module per year. Uh, and languages include French, Spanish, German, Japanese, and Mandarin. So again, really great if you want to expand your skill set while you're studying here. Now, a little bit about our entry requirements, fees, and funding. We are test optional. Uh, we accept high school diploma from a 3.0 GPA. Some of our courses might have subject specific requirements, and these can be met via grade 12 honors level courses or APs. Now, we will certainly still accept uh, uh, any standardized test scores if you've got them, so feel free, uh, but that isn't a requirement anymore. Now, our, our tuition and our fees range from about 14,000 to 17,000 uh, pounds per year, and that should be 2022-23 tuition and fees. And our paid work placement ranges from about 1,500 to 2,000 pounds per year. We also accept FAFSA veterans loans benefits and Sally May loans. And we do have a number of international scholarships available, including our 2000 pound international acceptance scholarship, which is running this next year as well. Uh, we've got some subject specific scholarships and paid, um, and paid work opportunities as well here at the university. Now, how to apply, there are two main ways to apply as a, 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 to Oxford Brooks. You can apply through UCAS, which is the UK Central University uh, application system, or you can apply to us directly using our direct application portal. Now, how to apply, you'll need proof of your qualifications, a personal statement indicating the course that you're applying for and the reasons why you wish to study, and a reference from someone who knows you academically. I do always recommend have a look at the guidance on personal statements. It's a little bit different here in the UK than in the US. Uh, so it's always worthwhile having a look at the, at the guidance available. UCAS has some really great resources there as well. And that's it from me. Thank you very much for listening today. If you want to find any more information, you can always visit our website at www.brooks.ac.uk, or you can get in touch with me directly. I'm more than happy to answer your questions at sfrank at brooks.ac.uk. Thanks and have a nice night. Perfect. Thanks so much. And as a reminder, if you all have any questions, I would encourage you to go ahead and put those in the Q&A and our panelists will get to them as we can. But we will keep things going with our next institution, which is the University of Sheffield.
Hi everyone, thanks very much for having us here today. Um, so my name is Tony and I am the International uh, Regional Manager for the Americas at the University of Sheffield. Um, so why choose the University of Sheffield? We are a leading global university, so we are ranked within the world's top 100. We're also a member of the prestigious Russell Group, which means that we are part of a group of 24 research focused, research intensive universities here in the UK. Um, we are ranked within the top set, top 10% of UK universities for research excellence. Um, and that means that the research that we do here at the university really impacts um, the world that we live in and helping, you know, tackle the challenges that we face today as a society. All of this trickles through um, to our excellent teaching um, through our world-renowned scientists and great experts. Um, and we have around 29,000 students at the University of Sheffield from 150 different countries. So by joining us, you'll be joining a really great community. Um, part of that community is our Nobel Prize winners. So we have six Nobel Prize winner, winners from the university. Um, some of the ones you might have heard of before are Sir Hans Krebs, for example, who um, invented the Krebs cycle. Um, also, you will be joining a long list of alumni um, that we've had at the university. Some of our notable alumni go all the way back to 1925, including Amy Johnson, who was the first woman to fly solo from Britain to Australia, um, all the way up to, you know, more recent times, um, such as Dr. Amal al Kurasi, who was the first woman to be elected president and speaker of the UAE Federal National Council. So by joining Sheffield, you will be joining a long line of great um, graduates that we have. Um, so we offer, we have 50 departments at the university across five faculties, which are the faculties of science, engineering, medicine, dentistry and health, arts and humanities and social sciences with a wide variety of subjects available within those departments. There's just a list of some of the subjects that we offer on the screen. Um, but obviously, if you, you're interested in finding out more about what the full programs um, that we have available, then you can go to our web pages and find out more. Um, some courses that we find that are really particularly um, interesting for US students are uh, politics and philosophy, um, anything kind of within the arts and humanities, English, um, business. So we, we have a great uh, range of subjects to choose from at Sheffield. Obviously, you're going to come to us, you're going to have obviously great studies um, and we want to help you get to where you want to be after you've graduated. Um, so by coming to Sheffield, you will be joining a really great um, community and we want to help you develop those skills. Um, and just some stats to, to show that we do want to help our graduates. Um, so we're in the top three in New Yorkshire and Humber for graduate prospects. Um, we have one of the top five career services in the UK and 96% of our graduates are in work or further study within six months after graduation. Um, and some of the companies that our graduates have gone on to work for in the past include the Bank of America, PwC, um, IBM. So we have connections and links with some really great global companies um, that you know, we fostered great develop, uh, development and relationships with them. Um, and often our students do find that if they've done um, a work experience or volunteer placement with, within these companies, then they have been able to secure jobs um, for after they've graduated. Um, so our career service offers a lots of different support for students, um, both during your studies and for up to three years after graduation. Um, and we also have a service within the university offering students um, part-time work during their studies. We have an outstanding student experience at the University of Sheffield, and we have the number one students union in the UK with over 300 clubs and societies um, on everything from nationality to sports, um, to more specific interests such as DJing, for example. So there's lots of fun things to get involved at to enhance your student experience. Sheffield as a city, um, it is located in the north of England in the region of Yorkshire, which is a beautiful green area. Um, we are about two hours from London on the train and Manchester Airport is our closest international airport. Um, so as you can see on the map, we're conveniently located within the UK. Um, so a great place to come to if you want to travel to other parts while studying here with us. Um, Sheffield has also been 
voted the most affordable student city in the UK for 2021, according to the NatWest Student Living Index Survey. Um, it's a great place to come to. Um, there's lots of things to get involved in. And what's great about Sheffield is we have the, all of the typical amenities that you would expect of a city. Um, so being England's fourth largest city, we have shops, bars and restaurants, um, but we're also very close to the Peak District, which is a national park offering students the options to go out um, and enjoy the typical British countryside. There's lots of events happening within the city, such as the World Snooker Championships, and we host a festival every year. We offer scholarships to undergraduate students. So uh, what we offered last year were 50 scholarships that were worth a 50% discount in tuition fees. Um, we're also a FAFSA accredited school and we do accept Sally May loans. Here's just a quote from one of our former US students um, who had a great time in Sheffield. Um, and if you do want to find out a little bit more, you can speak to some of our current ambassadors to find out what their experiences are of studying in Sheffield using the link on the screen. Um, if you do want to get in touch with me about anything, then my contact details are on the screen. And if you want to book a one-to-one -one appointment, um, then feel free to do so using my Calendly link. Thank you very much. All right, our next institution that's going to be presenting for us tonight is the University of East London. Hey guys, just for coming out tonight, give me a second, I'll just get my uh, presentation up. All right guys, just for coming out tonight. So my name is Tom, yes, I'm part of the University of East London. I'm, on, I'm just getting my timing going. I don't want to go over the time, I'll be getting told off. Um, I'm actually from Yorkshire, so if you go to the University of Sheffield, people sound a bit like me. Uh, it's a bit like uh, Game of Thrones, winter is coming. But uh, if we can get through to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about London, guys. So I live in London. Um, I live it down here. There's a lot happening. Obviously, you guys have heard of it. You've probably seen it in movies. Um, there's a lot to do down here. Um, you've got the theatre. You've got shopping from all over the world. There's food from all over the world. Uh, a massive amount of diversity down here. There's over 300 languages spoken in London. Um and around a thousand registered museums and galleries. So that gives you guys a lot of things to do at the weekends. Uh, most of those are free as well. So there's a picture on the left there, of the National Gallery. Uh, that's the biggest, well, actually, no, that's a lie. Uh, it's one of the biggest art galleries in London. I think the VNA is actually slightly bigger. Um, and then we've got Wimbledon down the loft, uh, the bottom left. Uh, that's another good opportunity for you guys in the summer to go see that. Um, it's pretty easy to get all the tickets for that. Um, and we've also got other sporting venues around the UK. So we've got Chelsea, Tottenham, uh, like top level Premier League teams. Um, other key things for you guys is so when you're over on your UK study visa, uh, you can work for 20 hours a week during term time and then 40 hours a week outside of term time. Uh, that's really good in London because there's lots of internship opportunities here, like most major businesses operate outside of London um, or have offices here. Um, and then when you graduate, you can apply for a two-year graduate visa. That's just started recently. Uh, so you can add that on. You can stay in London and work and study once you graduate. This is our campus. This is the Docklands campus. We have two other campuses. They're both in Stratford. Um, to give us some context, so you probably know about London, um, you know the bridge that comes up to the Middle Tower Bridge. We're probably about like 20, 25 minutes from there on the London Underground or the tube or the metro system or whatever you want to call it. Um, so the road there with a the little circle in the middle, that's our tube station. So we have a tube station on campus, which is great. It connects us up to the rest of London and the airports and the national railways. So in case you want to like travel around the UK and see something else, um, it's quite a residential setting, so you can see there's quite a lot of trees and houses nearby. Uh, we've got the river there, that's the River Thames, famous river that goes all the way through London. Uh, and just to the left of there, you can see the colourful sort of cylindrical buildings that are yellow and green and blue. Uh, that's our accommodation, so we've got our own on-site accommodation, which is quite unusual in London. Uh, you don't see it everywhere, so pretty proud to have that there. If you are based on the other campus, uh, and you're living obviously on this campus, we do have a free shuttle service that runs throughout the day. Uh, to bring you between the two, so it's not going to cost you any extra money if you are studying on the other campus. Um, we've been around since 1898, so we've got about 17,000 students on campus. About 20% of those are international students showing our diversity on campus. 
uh, like London itself. Uh, rent first in the UK for international support and visa advice. Uh, that's good for you guys. So when you're applying, it just makes it as easy as possible and as stress-free as possible. Um, and also we do accept FAFSA. Uh, we also accept FAP, Sally May, or any sort of like loan providers you want to bring from the US. As long as they're happy to bring it to us, we're pretty happy to accept most things. Uh, we're trying to be a careers-led university in London. Uh, so like I was saying about earlier, like thinking about internships and things like that, and thinking about you guys getting prepared for when you leave university. Uh, we have got a new thing now called a mental wealth module. Uh, and this is trying to get you ready for the world of work. So each one is tailored to each degree. So for instance, if you're doing law or you're doing biomedical science, they're very different. So they'll be tailored to each course. Uh, we also give you access to Amazon Web Services. So this gives you access to fast track interview opportunities for jobs and internships while you're with us and also when you leave when you graduate. In the UK, generally, generally UK degrees would be about three years instead of four. Um, that's just because they're so laser focused. So if you come to study law or biomedical science or whatever, generally you're going to be studying that for the whole of your course. So 95% of the course material resolve around that. You're not going to have general education, things like you do in the US. So it's really good if you know exactly what you want to do because it saves you a year of time and money. Um, first year tuitions around $19,000. It's the same each year, so it'd be $19,000 each year. Um, this is around eight to $24,000 cheaper than the US. Uh, we do offer international scholarships, so about $1,000 to £4,000 pounds worth. Um, applications are open now. They'll be open until July 2022, and you should receive a decision in about two to four weeks. They're the schools that we offer, guys, and our three most popular courses. If you are interested in applying, what I advise is going on the website, uel.ac.uk, going on the course search feature and just checking out what is interesting to you guys. So you can check by keywords, or you can check by course name, but go on there and have a little search around about what you're interested in and see if we've got it. Uh, sports is big at UEL. So during the 2012 Olympics, we had Team USA come and train with us. That was pretty cool. Um, they went to a lot of facilities in London, but they chose to come and train on ours, which was a big coup for us. Uh, ranked amongst the top three universities in London for sports. And we do offer sports scholarships as well. A uh, little shot of the UEL accommodation there, guys. So all rooms are private, unlike in the US. So you've got your own private room, which is cool. Own private bathroom and shower. Even if you've got the cheapest room, you'll have all those things. You also get a shared kitchen between three and five other students. Um, the prices start around $8,000 per year. Um, so a bit cheaper than on average in the US. Entry requirements, 3.0 GPA. And then also one of the following, so 1070 SAT. 23 ACT or three AP scores are free or above. If you've got any other scores or qualifications or anything, guys, get in touch on the email. I'll put it in the chat and uh, we can look into different things like international baccarat and stuff. If you want to apply, so you can apply via our website or you can apply via the Common App. They're completely free to apply via, uh, or you can apply via UCAS. Uh, I think there's a small fee associated with that. So I'd only apply via there if you can apply for a few UK universities. Great picture of the Queen there. I always like to see that one. Uh, like I said, I'll put my email in the chat if you've got any questions. Uh, thanks for listening. All right, and we've got one more institution to present tonight. And so we will keep things going with the University of Stirling. Thank you. I'm just gonna share my screen there. Um, hi everyone, I'm Ali and I'm Head of Student Recruitment here at the University of Stirling. And now for something completely different. Um, Tom had obviously mentioned the three-year um, degree in the UK. Scotland is the exception. So the UK is actually made up of four nations, um, and one of them is Scotland. And we have the four-year degree because the American system is actually based on the Scottish system. So it's something that you're going to be very familiar with. So I'm just going to cover a little bit about the Scottish system first, and then I'll talk about uh, the University of Stirling, which is where I'm based. So, like I mentioned, it's a four-year degree uh, structure. So that fourth year allows for a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more of the generalisation um, to start with, because students tend to pick up to three subjects in their first couple of years before they then um, decide which single honours or joint honours they want to do. Obviously, there are exceptions to that. So if you're wanting to study a professionally accredited course, um, like medicine, dentistry, nursing, paramedic science, it will be slightly different. But for a lot of the subjects, there is the, still the flexibility. And with that flexibility comes the um, opportunity to study abroad. 
So although you will be coming over to study abroad, um, you still have the opportunity to study abroad again um, in your third year for a semester or a year if you want to. And we've got um, partners right across the world and right across um, Europe as well. We also have flexibility to transfer. So if you do decide to go to a community college, um, we have transfer options at Stirling. Um, and a lot of the universities, because they're um, four-year degrees, have work placement opportunities built into that four years as well. So that's enough about Scotland. Let's talk about the University of Stirling, which is what I'm here to talk about today. So we are a medium-sized university. We've got 14,000 students and we're a purpose-built campus university. And we're known as Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence. Um, and actually last year we were voted as UK Sports University of the Year. Um, some of you may have been following the Olympics. Um, a lot of us were following them very closely. And um, one of the um, Olympians, Duncan Scott, actually took back four swim swimming medals for Team GB. Um, and he graduated from us in June. So we have elite athletes at Stirling, as well as um, begin sports beginners like myself. Um, and we have sports at all levels. Um, so you will be training alongside Olympians and Paralympic uh, Paralympians as well, um, but there are students who um, are maybe just starting out in, in, in trying out different sports. One of the things that we're most proud of is our student satisfaction rate. So every year there's a national student survey and it's when students vote for their own, um, their own experience, about their own experience, about their learning and teaching, etc. And we're consistently in the top 20 in the UK uh, for student satisfaction. So where are we? Well, obviously I've mentioned we're in Scotland. Uh, we're where the heart is. We're in the heart of Scotland. We're about 25 minutes from Glasgow, which is the largest city in Scotland. And it's where COP26, uh, the climate summit is about to start. Um, and we're about 40 minutes from Edinburgh, which is the um, capital city of uh, Scotland. A lot of people don't realize this, but Stirling was actually the ancient capital of Scotland. And um, so there's a lot of historical um, things going on and you're actually at the gateway to the Highlands so if you're interested in finding out um, you know hill walking or um, finding the Loch Ness monster uh, you're not too far um, to access in that. This is our beautiful Parkland cap campus we're probably the most Scottish university because we have our very own loch which is Scottish word for lake that's in the centre of the campus we've got our own castle on campus and we've actually got a nine hole uh, golf course as well home of golf Scotland. Um, we actually have um, a student village, so 2,000 uh, rooms on campus. We've got a pharmacy, a movie theatre, um, medical practice, dental practice, a wide range of shops, including a vegan shop, um, and a wide range of eateries as well as obviously our sports facilities. Um, so something for absolutely everyone. We even have our own hotel on campus. So if parents want to come over and don't want to crowd, uh, students too much, then uh, the hotel is over at the other side of the, the campus. Like I mentioned, in Scotland, um, you do have the possibility of um, undertaking a flexible curriculum, and at Stirling it's ultra flexible, so it's across the five faculties here. So we've got arts and humanities, everything from history to film and media to journalism, health sciences and sport. We've got a couple of new sports courses coming on board, sports psychology and sports development and coaching. Um, natural sciences, we're well known for environmental sciences and marine biology. We're consistently in the top three for criminology in the UK in our social sciences. And last but by no means least, we have Stirling Management School, which has a wide range of business programmes. We're test optional. We moved to test optional um, during the pandemic, and that has been confirmed for 2022 entry as well. So we're looking for about a 3.0 GPA. Um, and if students are submitting tests, these are the sort of scores that we're looking for. Please note, in addition to that, as part of the application, we would be looking for an academic reference as well as a personal statement. And we have three options. We would probably recommend if you're applying for multiple schools in the UK um, to just go through the UCAS system, because it's irrespective of whether you're applying to the University of East London or you're applying for a university in Scotland, like Stirling, it all goes through the UCAS system and you can apply to up to five schools on that application system. And we do go through the Common App as well. We do have the Common App, but again, you would just be applying to one school and we do have a direct application Stirling too. 
wide range of scholarships, um, international scholarships, um, not just sports related, but as you can imagine, being Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence, we do have extensive sports um, scholarships as well as full time coaches as well. And we are FAFSA, um, FAFSA approved, and we actually have a dedicated person looking after financial aid, um, US financial aid, um, and um, loans um, in the university. Our tuition fees have been um, have been announced for next year. So they're slightly different, um, whether it's lab-based or classroom-based. Um, so it's just slightly higher if it's lab-based. So it's about between 21 and $25,000 that you're looking at. But Sterling has one of the lowest, um, its lowest living costs um, in the UK of any student city. And about 20% of Sterling's population is actually made up of students. So everything in the city is very much geared towards the students. In terms of accommodation, what you'll find, in, certainly in Scotland, is um, it all tends to be single rooms, so you don't need to share with anyone. And we have a range of accommodation to suit all budgets, um, whether it's, um, you know, chalets, we've got chalets, we've got dorm style, um, as well as, um, you know, double beds and um, ensuite facilities as well. It is all self-catered, so students will need to have a couple of recipes up their sleeves. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, we've got a wide range of shops and uh, cafes and restaurants on campus. If you'd like to get in touch, if you want any more information, you can either um, scan the QR code there or drop me an email and I'll also put it in the chat. And I'm gonna pass back now. Karis, I think you're muted, sorry. Thank you so much. Well, like I was saying, I will keep things going with a brief Q&A. Um, if all of our presenters wanna go ahead and turn their cameras and our microphones back off. And the question that I want to know from you all is what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? Um, so I actually didn't mention this in the presentation, um, but our main building right on Marion Square is actually the childhood home of Oscar Wilde. If you don't know who Oscar Wilde was, um, he was a famous poet and screenwriter. Um, in the late 18th century. So there's a lot of history in the building um, and a really cool uh, feeling. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, and I think from Oxford Brooks, I, um, uh, I would say that uh, work placement and work preparation is really important here and student experience is really important at the university and, and definitely the faculty and the staff go out of their way to make sure that students uh, feel welcome and get through the process and are supported. So uh, certainly on that work placement side, that work preparation side, uh, Oxford Brooks is quite strong at that. Hi, yeah, yeah, for Sheffield, I would say that we, you know, we're a really supportive university, a really supportive community. community. We've got teams to help our international students specifically. Um, and for, you know, we want them to have a great experience here. So I'd say we're, we're a very welcoming and friendly university. Um, yeah, guys, we always have like amazing fun activities happening on campus. So one of the things that's happening soon is for Christmas, we have like a winter wonderland on campus. So there's like wooden cabins, uh, rides, uh, ice skating, things like that all happen on campus. So it's a very kind of Londony Christmassy vibe, very love actually vibes. But uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. But we have things happening all year round. Um, yeah, it's a fun campus and we always have events happening. Um, I would probably people are going to expect me to talk about sport being Scotland University for Sporting Excellence. I would say it's a, very much a community feel. But the one fact that I want to leave you all with is um, I'm sure some of you will have watched the film Braveheart before. Uh, starring Mel Gibson, um, because we are in William Wallace country or Braveheart, Braveheart country, and we have our own movie theatre on campus. The premiere, the world premiere for Braveheart was actually held on Sterling's campus. So there's a fun fact. Pretty cool. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. When you close this window, there will be a link to a quick five question survey. And so we would appreciate any feedback that you can provide about your experience here tonight.
I would also encourage you to check back on the schedule and sign up for more sessions because um, there are tons more happening tonight. And then finally, you'll be able to view this session's recordings as well as all of the other ones at strivescan.com Texas. That wraps up everything I have for y'all. Thank you so much and have a good night.